Today's scripture passage comes from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 31 through 39, and it reads like this. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He didn't spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all these things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than those who raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to the slaughter. No, in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither life, nor death, nor angels, nor demons, nor present, nor future, nor any powers, or height, or death, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, a vacation's a great time to learn new things. And so this year, our son uh, got to learn a, a number of things, and it was a great chance for us to learn an impact on our environment as we spent some time in state parks where there were no trash cans. You needed to kind of pack everything in and pack everything out. This led to kind of a more broad conversation about the idea of leaving no trace when you're exploring nature. Because while it's a pain to take all of your trash with you, it might be even harder not to take a souvenir rock with you to remember that time and special place. Like, souvenirs are great, and so we've kind of been programmed for that. Heck, even, even Peter wanted to make a little monument or carom at the top of the mountain where the transfiguration happened with him and Jesus and, and enshrine that moment in his memory. And yet, nevertheless... Something has to be said for leaving a place as you found it so that someone else can enjoy that space just as you did. But leaving no trace might be good for protecting the world around us for future visitors, but I've never met a single person who says, I want to live a life that is a leave no trace life. We all want to be remembered for something that changes the world in some positive way for, for someone or a lot of people. And so this week, we're finishing up this Heroes Teaching series as we turn our focus to the conversation back kind of on ourselves with one very important question. Are you living a life worth animating? A life worth animating transforms our world to more look like the future that we hope for. To put it in a more kind of Jesus-centric way, a life worth animating transforms the earth to better reflect the kingdom of God or heaven. And so while this seems like a difficult challenge, I think there's a few reminders that when we pause to think about can make it more manageable. Now, I love the challenge of the book of Romans for a lot of reasons. But in part, because we are reminded of the power that we are heirs of the kingdom through Jesus. He gave himself fully to overcome death for each and every one of us. Death has been conquered through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And now that that's been off the table, now that death has been overcome, what's more to hold us back? There's little to be afraid of, and so we can move into the future with hope and confidence. We can be a little bit more daring in the way that we live. We can, we can be more than just, you know, a, a decimating force that, that leaves wreckage along its path, though. You know, we're more than conquerors, and followers of Jesus are not these kind of spiritual locusts that, that suck the life out of everything. Rather, they bring life to barren places and hope to the hopeless. We are more than conquerors. We are hope bringers. As we have the collective power to change lives, we remember that this more than conquerorness allows us to live lives bold that are worth animating. As I was looking for, for graphics about being more than conquerors, all I saw were these Roman kind of clad people or, or that were a bigger and more powerful army. And that's, I think, missing the entire point of living a life worth animating. And, and what the, the author is trying to tell us here in Romans that we're better than that. We don't bring destruction, we bring hope. 
And this whole summer, I've been blown away by how we have demonstrated all these tools needed to live lives that are animation worthy lives. At the beginning of the summer, we did this little experiment that we called Flat Jesus, where we, we took a, a little flat, you know, 2D Jesus picture and, and sent, sent him home with all of you and said, on your summer vacation, whatever you're doing, just where are you taking Jesus? Take a picture, send it back. And you took Jesus on planes. You took him to national parks. You took him to camp and baseball games, to work and care for horses. You took Jesus to the gym and all around. You took Jesus to places that I'd never heard of or knew existed. You took Jesus everywhere. And some of you mentioned that, that then you didn't just take Jesus with you, but rather you met Jesus along the way on road trips and everything else. Jesus just showed up in the actions of strangers or throughout creation and through conversations in the car while you were driving. You met Jesus in some strange places and you got to know him more deeply. Some of you reported that, that when you began to, to know what to look for, it was really easy to see Jesus everywhere. This summer, We've been reminded that we can take Jesus with you and take Jesus with us anywhere we go. And we can all also meet Jesus in some unexpected places. Now, as a side note though, none of you said that you met Jesus in church while you were on your summer travels. And this isn't a condemnation or, or a note or of, of, you know, kind of we need to change some things, but rather a reminder that the most powerful places that we experience Jesus often happen outside of the church building when we're doing life. And so as long as we're taking Jesus with us outside the church walls, we may as well leave Jesus where we have been for others to encounter along the way. I believe that this is the real secret to living a life worth animating. It's to leave Jesus in as many places as possible so that others might then encounter him. Leaving Jesus with other people leaves those places that we travel to better because it leaves love behind. Love is how Jesus overcame death, and love is what we are invited into that transforms the earth to look more like the kingdom by bringing and being those hope dealers, right? When I, when I think about leaving Jesus behind and all that we can learn, um, I, I think often about Jeep dealer or Jeep owners, okay? If you're unfamiliar with, with um, Jeep culture, they do something called ducking, where Jeep owners will arm themselves with various little rubber duckies and and then when they see a Jeep in the wild, they will place a duck on that Jeep as to say, hey, nice Jeep. The owners will return to their Jeep and notice the little duck and the cycle continues. You know, however, there's a lot of joy in getting that little toy. And I can't help but wonder in our communities, what would change if we were to leave Jesus around our communities for others to encounter, not squirrel them away or secretly leave them under the doormat, but rather out in front so that others can encounter like those Jeep owners leaving ducks. In what way would our immediate community, our zip code changed if we responded to needs in a way that left people with a little bit of Jesus, what would it do to our zip code to transform in a way that left love for others to encounter? And so as we conclude our time today, I can't help but think of the impact that some of the saints of the church had on the world around them. The ma vast majority of them took Jesus with them wherever, and they left Jesus for their in their neighborhood in a way that transformed lives. You see, the church's power is that we see time and place these needs of the community and see it differently because death has been overcome. And so we get to slow down. We get to see the world differently. We get to pause long enough to, to see those opportunities to, to leave Jesus for others to encounter. We get to take Jesus with us and see the face of Jesus throughout our neighborhood and then leave him with, you know, in the form of a note or a freshly baked treat or by giving overworked parents a break for just a couple of hours. We get to see the world as people who are not limited by this life, but who are hoping for something better in eternity. And looking at that next season of your life, I would ask you to prayerfully consider how you might live a life worth animating, leaving Jesus with others so that we might transform our zip code into a little slice of heaven by leaving a little bit of Jesus behind for others to encounter. Amen.